Wow. So, I'm here. We are on chat right now. We are ready for any questions that you have. Now is the time to ask for all that good stuff. We are here for you. Yeah, so, none of my uh, bosses in the way to stop me from answering the juicy questions. That is very true. That is very true. We are completely unsupervised at this moment. This is fantastic. Ask the happen. questions that you want. I don't promise I'm going to, to use all of them, but at that yes. same point, we've got some good ones for I you. I promise I'll answer everything. I do have to be a little bit responsible. Yes, they are recording us. Ah, well. But, no, we are here for you, and let's see what we can do. So what questions do you have about the mechs and the new design processes for Battletech? Ooh, Harumoto Chi. I think, I think this already came up earlier today. Um, but Hatamoto Chi will come along. Yes, that's uh, high on our list. We have been asked that quite a bit today. The Hatamoto Chi, all of you who've been asking for these last few days, it's a good one right there. But sounds like we're going to be, it's something, it's in the yeah. works, yeah. it's it's in the plan. Sounds good to me. And it's getting to that point where we've got a really good basis for what mechs we've redesigned, and it's starting to be that question of the very factional mechs, especially with Karita and Lao. They have some very thematic mechs. Um, yes, they that do. We haven't really touched on yet. Gotcha. Oh, now we're now we're now we're kicking right here. Okay, uh, Anthony, your campaign seems to have the momentum of a runway freight train. Why are you so popular? Oh, uh, I mean, I'm here. Yeah, making the robots. Um, years of work, and I yeah, I don't think many of us expected it to go this big. Uh, I expected it to be at roughly the size of our last one. That was my expectation. Um, but, you know, maybe our the whole backer kit total, but within the 30 days. But, no, we're going to blow that away as well. Yes. Um, but it's just, it's all about the minis. And, yeah, making the game pretty again has helped revive it. Um, and then we got the knock-on, all the funding from that. Now all the books we're able to put out and full color all the time. It just all comes together. It's kind of that chicken-egg problem that we've had with many products Absolutely. Like, uh, having to put our compilation tiros out with old artwork because if we were going to put out mechs we had to have tiros and <laughs> no. one has to be the other right there yeah. it is very true okay what might be in the rifles and command pack if you can't release oh, that information that is fair man. well uh, we do want to be on time with this Kickstarter. We're very careful about not letting it run out of control like the last one did. So we are able to add more miniatures than we planned, but because we have content sitting around. So I would say look to the recognition guides and a lot of content we put in them. And... Uh, compare against what's already in the Kickstarter. That might be uh, a hint there. There may be some hints there. Look at the recognition guides. For anyone who's missed it, we've got, got 35 recognition guides oh, out there. Is, 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 is the, uh, the number. Oh, yeah. No, it's immense. But look it out. You've got some opportunities there. Okay. I'm still going through some of the older questions, so some of the things on the screen may not be as up to date. Uh, are you doing any of the art for the new cookbook? <laughs> I'd have no idea about oh, it, but no, I would not be. No. Um, I love to paint and draw, but the miniatures is such a full-time job. I paint very little these days, as much as I want to, so I'm just focused on the minis. I might be able to get a, a piece of cover art or box art in coming up soon. We'll see if that works out. Add. Plastic Uziel. Oh, that's a good question, because our Ironwind one is quite good, where we took the MechWarrior 4 cinematic Uziel model and just made it work as a miniature. Um, so I'd say if we really dig into the Fedcom era or MechWarrior 4 era of mechs, which I really love, uh, I'd say there's a good chance we'd get a plastic Uziel. Sounds good, sounds good. What was the best, most fun to design, and conversely, the worst? Of this Kickstarter coming out of, uh, I I mean, there's so many that came out really well, and I struggle to make favorites because of that. Um, and, I mean, I just see Hellhound 2 pop by. That's not in this campaign, but that was a fun one to canonize properly. Uh, those are kind of the exciting things to come through, is things that were unloved before that we can make really loved now. Or, you know, not be ashamed to put it on the table <laughs> when it becomes a miniature. But, you know, stuff like the Highlander 2C, Rifleman 2, a lot of the 2C mechs, those were really fun to work on. Um, and then, you know, some of the ones that I didn't like working on, I think the, what is it, the Firefly? 
uh, the firefly. Uh, okay. we, right here, we improved it, but uh, it's still uh, still a firefly. It's that mech that we blow out of the air in uh, the Mech Warrior Three intro cinematic, um, and say the we just had the proliferation cycle pack come out. The fire bee in that it was ugly. It's still ugly. It's just less ugly. Um, but that's one where I had to take it on personally because uh, some of our artists, it's really hard to blow a mech up and really change it a lot. Um, so sometimes I have to take on mechs that I don't like at all, but I know I can dig into it and just do what I can. <laughs> well, we appreciate that for all of these. Once again, we're here with Anthony Scroggins. You want to see, this is the man behind the mechs. He's got all of the ideas of what we're looking at right there. So, okay, going back to our questions right there. Uh... <laughs> Is the Hatamato just a jumped-up charger? Yes, yes it is. <laughs> yeah. But at that same point, still a great tra charger right there. And people say, oh, just take the charger model and put some armor slats on it. No, I'd, I'd like to give the Hatamoto Chi a, a proper run of a, a design. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay, how do you determine what to work on next? House clan, weight class, battlefield roll, other... Uh, yeah, see, that's the thing where I make it happen, but I'm given a list. And while me and my team get some level of input on letting uh, the bosses know what our favorites are, uh, generally, I just, hey, Anthony, we need these miniatures made. Good luck. And uh, it's my job is then to take that list and decide who's the best person to do what. You know, designs, 3D modeling, all the prep work. Uh, so, yeah, kind of the answer to the, how do you decide? I don't. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. He can check so the email. Sometimes I'm a little upset with the lists that come down, but hey, it's the job. Uh, and sometimes we change the list if, uh, you know, there's enough rough feedback from the team. And that's an important thing right there. It's always in flux, folks, so that is great. Okay, I know you guys don't have any plans for the Homeworld clans in the near future, but any plans for bringing their mechs into the game as redesigns from prior eras, such as Barak, uh, Rabid Coyote, Canis, etc.? Yeah, and that's always the, the biggest thing is there's all, a lot of the more obvious picks. You know, we're looking at Fedcom Civil War mechs, maybe even Jihad mechs, and then also need to support the Ill Clan. Um, but we're starting to see, like, the proliferation cycle. We can occasionally do these little side support products that really help fill a niche of, like, obscure errors and things. So it's kind of the, like, not off the table, I would say, just don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little time there. That's, that's a good one right we got here. This is a fun question. Dare underscore busted. Is there an official size scale breakdown of the mechs, and are all the ma minis scaled right to each other? Yes, I have a single 3D file with every single sculpt in it. It just went over 2 gigabytes in size, so it takes some time to load when I open up Maya. Um, but it's really important. We have first this big 3D file to, they're all in the progression of weight, and even with now we have so many mechs within each weight tonnage, we have the, the squat reverse leg mechs and the tall humanoids, and it really lets us get granular to the point where we size them by the half millimeter, and we take 3D volume calculations on them all, and we have a spreadsheet that gives us, well, this is the volume it should probably be at that tonnage. Uh, here's how much percentage you're deviated. Here's how much percentage this weight class is deviated where it should be. So I'm always on top of those numbers, and that is why the mechs these days are scaled so well, is it's the most in-depth scale system the franchise has ever seen. Um, you know, say PGI, when they wanted to scale their MechWare Online mechs, they made some efforts and they got things a little closer. Closer, yep. Um, but they didn't go to this order of magnitude of effort. So, yeah, that's that's been really good for me and being able to manage that because there's a lot of old sculpts that just had wacky size issues. You know, light mechs as big as assaults and vice versa. It's good to not have that happen anymore. Yeah, 
Anthony, you might have missed a couple of them right now, but I'm still a little bit further in the page. Mm-hmm. You're getting a lot of thanks. You are getting a lot. Thank yeah. you for saving the Lancelot. <laughs> you did some beautiful work. You and your entire team really yes. have done some gorgeous design work, so we want to make sure you yeah, hear that, too. It, that's very key. It's not just me out there. I do design a lot of these myself, but I also have other artists, and every single one is important because I can't do this alone. It's way too big. Uh, back when it was, I thought we might put out 10 designs a year or something like that you know we put out the game of armor combat box that's good let's do that in another year and then they said well what about 100 in a year and <laughs> I, I remember that conversation <laughs> that i remember seeing that email and here we are what we about 100 it. we made it so uh but i think we're gonna settle into a nice steady stream of just new miniatures for battletech and uh and it's important to fans, you guys buying it as well. That funds our work, you know. It's all cyclical, folks. Once again, that's the same for the artists, for the writers, for everyone who's here. You supporting this, going, going to, we're at 4,030,000, uh, we're at 15,100 backers right now. It's these sorts of numbers. It's this sort of response that allows us to do all of this that we love and to provide this for you. So it's a wonderful thing. So thank you, everyone who's here. Thank you for everyone who's still on with us this late. And we've got some more good ones. All right. Are we less likely to see Catalyst make model? Uh, me- models of mechs that Iron Winds is making? Uh, I don't see them as affecting each other too much. Um, in fact, Iron Winds seems very happy with us tackling all this work, which then they later get to use the same sculpt. It Obviously, they'll sell less if we've sold tens of thousands before then, but there are diehard metal fans that will always buy the metal. Um, they tell me that whenever they put out a new sculpt that we've worked on for Catalyst, it sells great. So there doesn't seem to be any bad feelings there, one way or the other. Um, Then we've shown it the other way, too, that even if Ironwind has recently put something out, and for Battletech recent is like the last five years, uh, we're still willing to make it in plastic, because examples there are the Scout. They've had that metal for many years now. Uh, Now in this Kickstarter, it's coming out in plastic, and people ask about the Uziel. That's a fine design as is but maybe it'll become plastic someday um and then oh now you've opened the door though yeah. i need to know are we going to see more of the ost series i think the only one we really haven't done is the ost war okay that was what i was thinking um, of right there i'm excited if catalyst asked me for that that's easy peasy we figured out the style of the new ost max nice um i think that one was given a pass because it's slightly less canon prolific than the rest it's, of it's an interesting it's an interesting yeah. one we did not see much of that but mm-hmm. you heard it here folks he promised me the first one <laughs> it was well it was worth a shot okay all right so wonderful and once again going back to a little bit of what lauren coleman said earlier today iron winds is one of our great partners right there we lo- we love working with them and once again the me- metal and the me- and the plastic are meant to go hand in hand right here loving the universe is exactly what we're enjoying right there so mm-hmm. great stuff uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Any thoughts towards revisiting the Protectorate Wars somewhere in the in the future? Loved the art book. Yeah, yeah that's- and that's it's on my mind pretty often. It's a mul- multifaceted issue, is how to describe it. Is first, uh, yeah, all of you that got in on the art book, um, thank you for all the support there, and the early people that got into my Patreon before it became a BattleTech Patreon page, and. I think, first off, while the art book is great, it really, um, it burned me out a bit, going for that big of a personal project, Um, because previous to that, my personal work was strictly for fun. Um, This is the thing with artists, the moment you make it a job, you lose some of the joy, Uh, but it sure is a better job than, you know, doing another job. Um, I don't know, in my head, I do want to go back to Protectorate Wars someday, Um, but I'm so dug into Battletech these days that... There's almost no creative energy left after that. Um, So I've been talking with management about, like, hey, let's see if we can reduce my workload a bit, see if I can kindle passions elsewhere. So that's a maybe. I definitely would like the idea of making more miniatures of my own design. Um, I'm not tackling a game rule set anytime soon, that's for sure. And But also I want to apologize that the Protectorate Wars art book kind of sits at a, like, a 95% done state for the last decade yeah it's it's past but i do hope to one day polish that pdf off and you know get it out there to everyone but 
Yeah, Protector Wars. He's going nowhere, folks. <laughs> he's lucky as he gets I'm up from the table. Send help. Yes. <laughs> Are your 3D designs going to appear in any upcoming digital entertainment? Games, videos, etc.? Mm, I mean, I would say... Sure, the video right here, the big... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that thing that now that we have all these 3D assets, they're great for general purpose use. Now that said, Catalyst Game Labs is separated from the video game side, and um, while I'm sure everybody wants to see a cartoon or movie or TV show... Uh, I don't. <laughs> that's a dangerous proposition. <laughs> Both Extreme. in hoping for it, and you know, we've all seen what we've seen amazing TV adaptations yeah. come of our favorite IPs, and we've seen disasters. Oh yeah, we're going to what uh, we're jumping a bit to what Voodoo Lou Kerensky said right there. Yeah, we don't need a burnt out artist. <laughs> yeah, so burnt good out stuff. Real, um, right before the last Kickstarter, I was just finishing up a year and a half break from art because I was burned out. Um, all those artists out there, if you're struggling to be motivated and you've thought of like do i need to stop doing art for a bit and that's a really tough call to make i pushed it off for years uh do it take your break go get a job somewhere else i worked a freight at a grocery store and in inventory and just it let me pay the bills without stressing about it as an aspect of my art and i came back strong and that's how you guys got 100 mechs out of me and you see that, and sometimes that's the route to success, folks. But that's a very important thing. We all do what we love, but also make sure that you're keeping yourself healthy. That mental is an important thing. Mental health is, it's a mental profession, so. Mental yeah, health is important, absolutely. And it is critical. Okay, another one from Fender Saxby. Uh, you and the team have done such a fantastic job of modernizing while keeping true to the original designs. Is there a strategy or rule of thumb to do that? Uh, I definitely have a strategy, and it's multifaceted, and it's got to be flexible because every mech has a bit of a different thing about it, you know? Uh, so it's all about the big picture and making sure that you end up with a certain amount of faithfulness retained, but it can come from different areas. So sometimes it's just one very specific area of a mech, and then you can change a lot of the rest. Sometimes it's uh, the whole silhouette that you need is iconic for a mech, and then you can change a lot of the small things. Um, so I think I mentioned it yesterday is, yeah, I'll look at the silhouette of a mech, what parts of that silhouette are important. Let's try to keep that. And then what small shapes are, you know, what are the specific shapes of the weapon barrels on something uh, or the side torsos? You know, the head is obviously a big one. Um, and I know I caused contention there because I tend to tweak the cockpits on almost every mech, but I'm still trying to keep the spirit there while modernizing it a bit because Battletech has a lot of goofy faces on their old mechs. Um, I lost down. the bet right there. I was wondering who was going to bring up cockpits first. I may not have gotten down <laughs> to that did. list. It's all on him Shots himself. Fired. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll change your cockpits if I think it looks better. Uh, but then sometimes it's just like a specific panel line across the chest that's all important. Like the... Um, the Victor has a lot of things going for it, but it has those hatched lines across its missile tubes, and so we have that in the sculpt. Um, so it's a lot of things, but it's just keeping the big picture in mind, and uh, yeah, you got to pay attention to the fan base. So I had years of fan art redesigning mechs, engaging how my client commissioners reacted to my work, how general fans reacted to how I designed things, and nailed in, like, okay, this seems to be working, let's refine that mm -hmm. and so by the time catalyst warmed up to it i was ready oh excellent excellent uh how much do the uh mech warrior online designs influence the current era of sculpts that's a very interesting bit because yeah alex uh iglesias has pretty much gone through the same process and struggles that i have just for mech warrior online um, but because we are different companies and companies hold intellectual property, uh, we do our best to not straight lift and rip off each other. Um, we appreciate that. Yeah, so, but sometimes they've just done something the right way. And it's, even if I try to take that out of my head and try to imagine a mech myself, it's going to come out the same way. That's called uh, convergent design. Um, so, for example, our king crabs look very similar. Because that is just how the king crab should look. Yep. Um, and I know there's been a few other mechs that ended up that way, but I definitely look at mechware online designs when uh, there's overlap there. And kind of my goal is I want to make sure mine is as cool as theirs. If I can beat it, even better. Um, but it's that kind of they went first, now they've set the bar, and 
Um, it can help us avoid mistakes or get inspiration, but I am always trying to come up with something original as well. That is very cool, Anthony. That is great. Okay. Will we see any more museum scale miniatures? Possibly even a box set in the future? I'm, I am terrified by the thought of the price of a box set yeah. museum scale miniatures. Oh, wouldn't hold your breath for box set. But clearly the uh, Destiny scale, which is 28 millimeter scale, I can confirm that. Mm. Um, it's very popular here, uh, even at its outrageous price point. I'm sure Catalyst will work to bring that down as it moves into more of a production scale. Um, but that is still for our bosses to decide if that is the move to be made. Um, but clearly everybody wants to. So you've got the whole of Catalyst passionate about things that move out of uh, niche tabletop wargaming and back to the old times where we had toys. Um, and it was a like multifaceted franchise. So I think it's pretty good. Action odds. You're gonna figures. See more. Um, <laughs> And yeah, museum scales, you know, yep. not too huge, but I say look for the real big stuff and, you know. I'm lo- <laughs> seeing the Destiny scale Marauder, which we had here on sale. It was tremendous. It was fantastic. We have, at this point, day two sold out of those. Yep, uh, we are completely gone. sold out here at the moment. It, w- it went, and that w- there was a significant supply. It's very impressive. Mm-hmm. All righty then. Will we see? Oof, pardon me. Will we see more of the clan battle armor types showing up in plastic anytime soon? Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think over time we're going to see more battle armor in general. It's still that question of uh, is it viable to do a lot at once? Um, we talked about that earlier today with Randall. He said a lot about it. Uh, we were Randall actually wanted me to have more battle armor in the wings for this Kickstarter, mm-hmm. but I think we've just run out of time for that. That's very fair. They, Once again, they, they may be tiny, but they are almost as much work to make as a mech, yep. uh, because you have to find a way to make it look how it should, with almost no detail room. Uh, we're making blobs that look like distinguishable battle armor. Actually, uh, Brent Evans, our art director, a little earlier when he got a similar question right there, people were asking about just standard infantry at that size, and he, yeah. he was the other one saying, at that size, it's really tough yeah. to get detail. It, it, There's it's, already a lot of good third-party product where you can fulfill that if you really want it, but it's that thing of should we dedicate time into making blobs of plastic? Um Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good point. That's a very good point right there. Okay, so we're catching up a little bit right here. We don't need a burnt out artist. Uh, what do you think is your most drastic redesign and then the mech that needed the least modification? Mm. That's an interesting question. Yeah, That's really we, great. I mean, we've had a lot of very drastically redesigned mechs. Um, and, you know, I think some of them weren't even done by me. There's ones like the Sentinel and the Mercury, which Bishop Steiner did where it's like insanely different and they turned out to be just hits of that kickstarter uh i'm trying to think about this one obviously the firefly got a lot of change the black python yeah black python looking black python's one of the most improved uh one of my favorite most improved is the kraken 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 Kraken. oh my god Uh, that went to just absolutely disgusting looking mess that can't walk to now it's a giant gun carrier um and tell us what you really think (laughs) and that's you know it looks a bit more anime and you know we want to get that in when it fits into battletech you know i'm not just going to cram anime style in um because you know that kind of um, heavy gear, armored core type stuff. I like those aesthetics too. That's a nice. Um, that can be a nice aesthetic. And yeah, at least change stuff. Yeah, there's a few mechs that need very little change. Um, some of our two Cs were just pretty close already, like the Highlander two C. Oh, um, such. If you didn't see it earlier during our games, right there, that is a dis- that is a just tremendous sculpt right there. On it the is fantastic. The flea practically didn't change at all because really it is uh the mech warrior 4 version uh by david white and then he had Mm. some tro line art of that for uh, a tro at some point and well i said i like that one i made a little tweaking you know made its arms a little more maneuverable but very little change i drew right over his artwork (laughs) to finalize it um yeah the Crockett. Well, we've got. We're getting a lot of people popping up. A few. Oh, some mechs. Their favorites, right yeah. there. I thought we did. We did the Crockett. The there, Crockett. Didn't we? It's not 
Going, you, we did do the Crockett. That's in yeah. the Comstar, one of the Comstar yeah, packs. Yeah, the, Cro- the Crockett's in one of the Comstar packs right there. The other name for it, I always forget. I think it's just a Croc. Oh, no. it's the Corita version. Yes. Where it's the same mech. Um. <sighs> the Crockett. And somebody's going to answer me on the on the uh, chat, I'm sure. I'm embarrassed. Katana. The yes. Katana. Yep. Thank you. I knew somebody had my back right there. Thank you. It, which yes. is surprising. I haven't seen enough of them painted up in red to be that yet there's a lot people that buy the comstar packs of all of our packs will buy the comstar pack and paint a comstar mm-hmm. whereas the others you know we yeah, haven't seen many uh, Corita paintings of that that's very interesting right get there. on to yeah. people more katanas please yeah no, more <laughs> katanas you, you you've heard it here first folks now i'm very intrigued that's a fun little mech that is a, that is a fun mech and that, i like the design that of that is one of another most improved you know all those yeah. egg mechs and barrel mechs um yeah we have to mention the long tom. Well done. Wonderful there. Uh, apologies if it's already been addressed. Uh, canonized Ragnarok redesign oh, from uh, that's yeah, the thing where I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed because all they have to do is replace its lava gun and you know they could give it blue shield or something else other than its actual solid light energy shield. That was one of my favorite mechs in Mech Assault. I would go into multiplayer with that and you had to learn to... Um, lag time your energy shield to stop Mm -hmm. the ppcs coming in and uh you know fire your lava gun at the enemy's feet to get more splash damage than you'd otherwise get it was a well it's a bit cheesy i got to admit well you at that same point you know a fan right there that's a wonderful (laughs) thing he's got all the skills right there uh what other great questions do we have right here uh When we had toys, the Battletech story. That is very funny. Yeah. Um, will we see a redesigned coolant truck? That, That's I think a fun question. That'll uh, be a good... Will be measured out by management by how this Kickstarter goes. Because, yeah, the pack with the Long Tom, mm-hmm. MASH, and Mobile HQ, it's all objective. Obviously, the Long Tom is a really cool piece. Yeah. Um, but if they see that these more objective-focused vehicles are selling really good then they might consider doing more because they're great map dressing. Yeah. Great for making convoys that you need to protect. And as a lot of us know, Battletech is really enjoyable in a campaign setting rather than a competitive tournament setting. Yeah. Um, I've definitely been hooking a few brand so many brand new never played Battletech people are coming in and ready to commit to buy a game of armor combat box or alpha strike box. Campaign operations uh, right there has been a huge seller with us right the now. You tell them that this game you just play it how you want and it's great for campaign play and persistence and repairing your mechs between matches uh, they light up and they're like whoa like uh, they didn't imagine that could be a thing that their game was focused around that is magnificent no and uh, we appreciate that uh okay what else have we got here uh i just uh can we get something with a sword uh i hope so because i want more than just hatchets swords swords look cool in in moderation, yeah. Well, also one of the, that's one of the things we were just talking about a little earlier, right there. We've got a lot of Karita mechs right there, mm-hmm. especially some of the redesigns that had the swords. That was very very big yeah. in the Republic era. That yeah. we haven't gotten all of them yet. We've, got, we've gotten some redesigned pictures mm-hmm. of them right there, but not the minis themselves. We'll that's very see, exciting. We'll have to see if any of that pops up with our faction packs coming around. Ah, faction packs. Interesting. Uh, uh, something just flew over it's my head. It's raining stickers. It's raining stickers. Okay, build, paint, play. Awesome. I agree with all of those things. Uh, what do we have here? Oh, well, that was the next question we had right there. Any hints on to stretch gold battlefield support vehicles? Nah, I mean, that was kind of covered earlier. Yeah, look you were just towards, talking about that. Look yeah. towards the recognition guides. Look towards the recognition guides. Uh, recommendation of Turkina is most improved. That is entertaining. I do like the Turkina. Yep. I was just playing it in the grinders today. Can we get poster size blueprints for all the mechs from both Kickstarters? <laughs> yes. Guaranteed. Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> See, we've uh, gotten to that point in the evening. That's yes. We need yes, more we because that's another one of those kind of merch items where it existed and then Catalyst just didn't print it again. Because we've made blueprints. I think we can make better blueprints. We can make better blueprints now. Those ones were kind of rushed out for, I believe, the last Kickstarter or something. Um, I want to see more blueprint posters. I want to see more posters in general. Yep. Um, Yeah. Okay, just we'll mention this before the the rush we had right there. Uh, Red Reaper, Black Knight with sword and shield. Naomi's uh, Centurion with the shield. Yen Luang. Mm, Shields. Mm. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's... 
all these cool products and that we're working on because a part of why this Kickstarter launched now instead of earlier is because we always work on the stuff inside that goes straight to retail. So stuff that I won't talk about. Um, <laughs> As well, you shouldn't right there. There's always something a little spicy that we're working on. And, uh, yeah, can't wait for them to come out. You've heard that, folks. Something spicy co- this way comes. That is a great thing. Okay. Faction packs. Question, question, question mark. Yes, we've got yes, that. We've got some exciting. Slightly hinted at here and there. And I, I heard Randall talk about it earlier today. And I confirmed with him, yes, we can talk about it. Faction packs. We will finally have force packs that are faction themed. So the mech selections will better fit that faction and they will tandem release with a book that teaches you how to play that faction in a more fluffy manner because really while us older players know what to do uh, new players don't and that's a huge struggle they are coming from other games that have very specific guides on how to play a faction often forcibly so uh, but we want to give you the option to play fluffy if that's what you want without having to be taught how to by another person or deep diving the internet for years uh so yes faction packs say you'll get a karita pack and then uh how to play karita and that will cover uh succession wars and clan invasion era and then we will after that release an ill clan karita pack and another uh, add-on guide on now now here's how to play them in more updated era and so i don't know what factions they will ultimately cover but that's uh that's in the plans Sounds good. Sounds good. That is very cool. Faction packs. That is really exciting. You got everyone really uh, excited by all that. If you need a shield, just grab the urban mech by its handle and go sword and board. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some good stuff right there. We're talking about the uh, the cookbook. <laughs> this is awesome news. Yes, yes you, you got is. you got to drop that one. That, I, that is a fun. I one. like that it is. Yeah, taking the format that some other games take, but in an entirely voluntary manner, continuing this theme of do play Battletech how you want, um, and the kind of product options you have as well. Yes, indeed. That is great. Faction packs and paints full out. That is great. Hmm, interesting. Are there any little flares or greebles you try to put in for specific manufacturers of mechs and vehicles to differentiate them? That's a great question. That's, tre- yeah, that's uh, tremendous. It's... it's Never a uh, focus from manufacturer. There's some more obvious ones like the Aus series where we tried to make them more cohesive to each other. But I'm usually just focused on the individual unit itself and finding its little flares and unique lines uh, like I covered earlier. So uh, some of them do have you know, more protrusions and we want to keep those where we can because that's great detail. Um, but that's something that definitely comes up a lot is often as a critique is... As we modernize things, everything's getting a bit of this modern aesthetic, which in the past you might read as, say, yeah, a manufacturer's aesthetic. Um, but, yeah, I, sometimes I, I want to argue that I don't see it that way um, because I know that just the same, many, very few mechs in the past when given to an artist, were they ever intended to look like they came from one manufacturer? Um, obviously, uh, totem mechs look like they come totem from a certain mech. faction um, but as things yeah it's it's talked about like what if we made stuff look like it came from a certain factory I think that's probably more of a limitation than adding value to the to the miniatures and the designs so uh, no I don't try to make them look like they come from a certain manufacturer <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Question. Speaking of Greebles, there's a lot of cohesion in the weapons from model to model. Are those reusable assets? Sometimes we'll reuse something when it really makes sense, especially if it's lore-based. Say, the Warhammer uh, arm gun is then just taken and slapped on the Banshee's arm because it's supposed to, say, they just shoved a Warhammer arm on there mm-hmm. for that variant. Uh, so there's cases like that. Um, and then particularly when we're doing refits of mechs, say for the, the Merc Pack variants of our existing mechs and upcoming and then legendary packs, we'll have reused. If it makes sense, I'll pull a weapon from another. But in general, when we sculpt a mech for the first time, we don't pull parts from others. Because um, I do want some variation to keep build up. And so... And while we scale our weapons better in general, we also don't go at them with a measure stick. We kind of just feel it out. Um, and I would like to 
just throw a, a bone of defense over to PGI. I see them get accused a lot of just having a parts library that they build their mechs out. I've talked to them. They don't do that. They do have greeble parts, like yeah. vent fins. Obviously, the weapons are all standardized. But when it comes to building a mech, they build them from scratch just like we do. Okay. Um, and it's, I think it's something that all the artists and modelers will take pride in, knowing they're not just copy-pasting things. Um, because that is a great way to work yourself into a hole of monotony. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, and making so we, something fresh We each do time. things inefficiently to force a little more variety out. Yeah. Yeah. And clearly the quality is there. You're seeing it right now. Everyone is really supportive, yeah. and it's, we appreciate it. Not to mention, many of us have been here through the changing eras when you yes. could see some things, you couldn't see some things, and we had to change all of this stuff. So yeah. we all really yeah. appreciate it, Anthony. We know how much you and your team is is doing about that, so we appreciate that. Uh, any mods coming out to make a mech variant? Um, like parts kits. I'm, I'm, assu- uh, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's, that's what we're asking here. That's something I think would be pretty smart. Um Sometimes it's a question of it can be oddly specific how a weapon needs to fit to a mech. Um, Because, say, Ironwind makes quite generic weapons kits, and I think they become too generic. You have to end up doing a lot of your own hand modding work to make that. So it's it's kind of a rough both ways things, and um, at least we have made a first baby step with both of the Marauders in our legendary packs have swappable dorsal guns. So there will be a total of four dorsal guns that fit on any of them, which will allow you to make about 90% of all Marauder variants between those two. Um, so those that have wanted like more WYSIWYG out of their miniatures, it's going to be a really cool set of Marauders. Um, really cool. I was pretty hyped when we fell upon that solution. Um, yeah. That sounds like a tremendous solution. That is great. Will there be more aerospace fighters? Uh, yeah, over time, I think, again, Randall and Brent, Ray, we all said we'll trickle those things out. Um, if we were to go all in on aerospace fighters, there would need to be an aerospace game to go with it. Uh, not just something you bring into Battletech. It would need to be something that people buy. Because your average player is not going to bulk up on aerospace fighter packs. I don't blame um, So it's kind of as they're needed, you know. Right now, the first two, they're Kickstarter treats. Maybe we'll keep having those little treats added along the way. We also work on them just for use in our illustrations because it, it's gone a long way with our illustrators being able to just grab a 3D model and not worry about if they've screwed up the perspective or the proportions. It's, the mech always looks like how it should now. That's the important yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. It's awesome that the Rifleman and Warhammer have the same legs. Thank you, Scroggins. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're not exact, you know. They are they have their differences. Um, we have a Warhammer coming in this Kickstarter, and I've really enhanced it in some cool ways. Um, so it's actually my new favorite Warhammer sculpt, and I think people really like the new proportions on it. Yeah. That is great. Okay, I've got to ask because it's coming up right here. The Celestials. We will will we see them again? People keep asking, and it's a thing where none of us are opposed to it. And just like the proliferation cycle pack, it's when it seems to fit in our schedule and what we can manage to support those special areas. Because I, a lot of people don't like jihad, but I know a lot of people do. I know my local game group is an all areas gaming group. And we absolutely love running jihad scenarios, and it would be cool to have modern plastic celestials on the table. You heard that here, folks. A, a celestials pack would be very cool. That's, we're getting a lot of that. That is an interesting yeah. one. The, Go to the word of Blake, Archangel, the word of Blake stuff. There, but so are all our primitive mechs that we just put out a pack for. So. <laughs> well, I've always seen a lot of potential in the celestials that Brent made. Um, and I think with a facelift from our team, they would look amazing. Um, enough to justify a level one level two box. <laughs> so it's not a no. We've got Lauren Coleman yeah. here. That is a wonderful thing. But these are the negotiations that we look at. It is fantastic. That's how things yep. get made. That is a great thing. But yeah, no, the Celestials were some very interesting units right there. We love them. Okay, so let's get let's get real crazy with variants. Any thoughts on a Hero Forge for mechs? Yeah, and that rolls into a bigger subject of where are miniatures in the industry going? And 
a lot of you guys have 3D printers at home. That's always a question. I want to print my mechs at home. A lot of you do. Um, and eventually, printers are going to get so good and so prolific that it really just makes sense to do that. Maybe there will be also better integrated but fair DRM systems. Because I know all of us hate DRM, but, you know, SDLs is a very interesting thing where the moment you put an STL out into the wild, it's gone. It's free. Oh, uh, you're never putting it back in the bottle, genie in the bottle type thing. Um, I think Hero Forge for mechs would be awesome um, because it's not realistic for us to make a plastic of every variant, but some people really want that. Um, so I'd say, you know, as the as markets and technology evolves, I would say expect that someday, probably before we die. <laughs> He's got some real high hopes right here, folks. <laughs> no, I think it's actually that's an artist's go. positivity right I'm there. Not saying, before uh, we die, we might have that. <laughs> I'm saying look forward to it. I think it'll happen. Also, that is my quote for the weekend right now. When are we getting this? Before we die. <laughs> that is a good answer. I love that. Anthony, this is this has been so much fun. I'm enjoying this. It is fun. This is great. Okay. We got some people saying that the plastics mod really well. That's very true. Right there, yeah, a lot of kid I hear it both ways. I've had an easy time, not the easiest time. Obviously, resin scrapes mold lines a lot easier than plastic, but I've found <laughs> them. Sorry, I've found them cleanable, and yeah, uh, people say they're hard to mod. I thought that cutting metal would be a bit harder than cutting plastic. That's my unexperienced opinion. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's great. I'm sorry, folks, for laughing out loud. One of you made me laugh out loud here. We'll get to that one in a second, right there. <laughs> Somewhere, is there a list of all the mechs that have been produced? Mm. I have that list, but that's my private documents. Um, I know some people maintain pretty good lists, but I wouldn't know where to point you. Fair uh, enough. Fair enough. I don't believe there's a. I'm, I don't believe there's a full list. That granted, if you go through all the force packs, you'll you'll see what we've yeah. already got out. But I know his the list is going to be different than ours. A few people had some Google Sheets going public that helped you see everything in there. Hopefully, during this Kickstarter, people will recompile all that. Um, and you know, maybe one of you in the chat, you need to be that guy. Uh, go hunt down everything from beginner's box all the way through the Kickstarter and our new miniatures, and put them all in a list, organize them by tonnage. Uh, yeah. And then send the list to us. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm using my screen like it's a touch screen right there. I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a few funny There's a few funny ones right here. We are getting a shout-out from Tommy over at PAX East. It is good to see you, Tommy. I hope you're having a ton of fun right there. We miss you. Uh, Sarna.net is a huge resource. That is great. I use it all the time. <laughs> Artists and, and uh, authors use it all the time. We need to know. <laughs> We've got a rich area here. Faction packs. Tay-Tay, uh, faction packs. <laughs> Tay -tay to the birdies. Faction pack. Yeah, uh, confirmed, clearly. Confirmed. Uh, you, oh, we yeah. need to cover every faction. We were talking about the stuffies before today, too. Wow. <laughs> it's you, Everybody is loving Far Country. Uh, that is magnificent. Uh, uh, to tay, tay stuffy would be pretty funny. A Tay, -tay stuffy would yeah. be pretty funny. Do it. Fun yep. it. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. uh, gotcha. No links in the chat. That's all good. Yeah. Okay, we've got a lot of other shout-outs. Oh, one from Dylan Bertolo. Wow. One of my favorite designers of all time. Sending, sending our love over to PAX right there. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Uh, yeah, narrators use Sarn as well. Everyone does. I'm very glad about that. Uh, Jade Phoenix. The Jade Phoenix. Uh, is That's one of our new... Hill Clan mechs, I believe. Is that one of the new Hill Clan mechs? That's, I think so. That's, um, I have to take some responsibility. There are a good number of Hill Clan era sculpts that we have sitting pretty close to done where I need to help Ironwind push them through, and I've just been so busy with the Catalyst side of things that I have underserved Ironwind um, so that they don't have more miniatures out right now. It's kind of my fault. Uh, I'm talking with them, and you eventually trying, need to sleep. Trying Anthony. to get things moving, yeah. It's not. I'm not good at splitting my attention, and it's bad enough that my job as an art director is to split my attention. Uh, so doing it between multiple companies and thoughts of doing personal work and freelance commissions, I can't handle it. So uh, I'm doing my best. 
Gotcha. Yeah, no, that is great. Not to mention the, the Jade Phoenix. That, that was uh, there are so many of the J, uh, the Jade Falcon mechs that had such a unique design scheme, especially in the Republic uh-huh. era, right there. Yeah, just th- those were tremendous. I remember seeing them for the first time, and now that we're, we've got so much already out there, yeah. and the Erie and a few of the others right there, that is very impressive. Uh, what else do we have right there? Uh, can Anthony give me his Gauss Rifle Highlander? I will trade a <laughs> kidney for it. That is from Six Sides of Gaming, our partners right there. You will have to negotiate that separately with him. Uh-huh. Yeah, ben. I see the, the do I still do commissions. I wish I was offering them for some variety in my work, but I'm just not mentally there yet and time-wise there yet. Uh, the day that I offer commissions again, um, I'm sure there will be a first few where I do it for closer friends. Um, but when I offer them, it'll be loud and clear everywhere, you'll know. Um, and then you'll have to scramble amongst each other and probably beat some of each other to death. And, you heard it here, yeah. fro- folks. I am one of his closer friends, so keep <laughs> keep that in mind as Someday, we go Someday, I hope. I want to do commissions again. Oh, and we all want you to do commissions again. We love what you're doing right now, but we want you mm-hmm. happy and fulfilled. How difficult is it to ensure light mechs maintain detail level and unique features despite having sm- a smaller canvas to work on? Yeah, that is definitely a concern of... Uh, and I think it shows that we have some light mechs just packed with detail and others where it's scaled back. And I think not having the window wide open there is helpful that we can occasionally over detail something. And we, we really don't push the limits of what we can do with the plastic to the limit all the time. Because um, there's always that risk that it doesn't quite come out how we want it to. But sometimes we're like, let's push it and see what happens with this one. Uh, So there's a few mechs in this Kickstarter that are going to have things that we want to see what happens with them. Um, The Warhammer we're getting is going to have hexagon-shaped missile tubes. I want to see how much that hexagon shape comes through really? at such a small size. Because, uh. you know, we've got some art out there where it's hexagon-shaped tubes, not all circles all the time. You know, looking for different things that we can do. Um, but the light mix, no, it's not too much of a struggle. Uh, you just got to know going in, you know, don't pack it as tightly detailed as an assault mech. And it is true, assault mechs take a lot more work to get done because there's a lot more going on with them. That is very true. That is very true. Okay. Uh, what else do we have right here? Over 15,000 backers. Yes, it is important Remain remember uh, to remember right there. Uh Sounds like we're going to see some more Falcon Totem mechs. That's good. Do you think there will ever be any map scale dropships molded from plastic models like Snap Tight that are easy to assemble and look and use? I hope so. Uh, and we talk about it semi regularly. We've been talking about it at this convention. Um, I because some people really want mech scale dropships. Yeah, I think that's a bit crazy. Uh, that's maybe something that really that would be a really good first foray into selling STLs, yes, where sir. you can print something enormous at home yep. and not have us manufacture it. And uh, it's been brought up before: what can a store put on their shelf? Uh, stores are not going to be able to put a mech scale dropship on their shelf. Not two of them. Or not three two of them. Four, <laughs> uh, when they could fill it with force packs. But I really like the idea of map scale dropships because, again, we love our objective play. And so I want un- a union, an overlord, a leopard, and a fortress or something for a fourth. I, I do want drop ships made, um, and I think we'll eventually do them. But That is very cool. That is very cool. Uh, and once again, this is a little off topic right there, but I will work with fiction editor John Helfers to get you the answer to the pressing questions of how exactly you say the name of Tete-Tete or uh, <laughs> what we're looking at there. I do, we do not know right now. We, we, uh, now I'm seeing it. Now that's good. some good options right there. Uh, Destiny Scale, Locust, Owens, Wasp, Spider. See, <laughs> some of those are actually good ideas, like a Destiny Scale Locust, because they cost a lot less than a heavier and assault mech to produce. Yeah. Uh, so, again, the the Marauder, and there's been the Urban Mech uh, <laughs> test pieces. I think if once Catalyst pulls the trigger, you could absolutely expect a Locust someday. We're getting some questions if all of your friends just set up a battle royale to get in there right there. <laughs> Did Anthony just say people need to fight his close friends for commissions? Did Michael just make himself <laughs> yes, a target? If you defeat them, you will become the close friend. <laughs> you have to absorb their essence, though. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, alrighty then. What else do we have? Right. Uh, what neck did you struggle with the most, taking from design to plastic? Mm, well, uh, for sure, the very first few ones we did, where we were all figuring out how to do it and the type of work relationships that and engagements that should happen. You know how overbearing we can be on each other. So the very first three we did. Uh, that made it to the line art stage was the Warhammer, the Marauder, and the Locust, and those were a nightmare um, because it's me, Ray, Randall, and Brent just going at it. Um, the most nitpicky, pedantic critique passes and back and forth and um, badly unwritten, unprofessional emails sometimes and uh, stubbornness. And, yeah, some from me, too. Um, you know, I felt they brought me in for my vision, and I wanted to say, okay, stand back and let me do it. Um, but, no, we're talking, like, taking four times as long for each of those mechs to get done. And they turned out good, but now we're at a point where things go pretty smoothly most of the time. And so, of like, recent memory, you can never say one was just really hard to get done. Um it's yeah i'm pretty good at getting a vision going for something whether it's me or telling another artist to work on it um, but that is a wonderful thing wonderful and thing you know that's practice you know we're, we get better and so now it's a little more easy street than before very true all right folks we're getting into our final 15 minutes right there we're going to take another about another 10 minutes with anthony right here because we did start a little early that is great uh so if you've got any any final questions please get them in now that is lovely uh when do we get the next coloring book Oh, the coloring book was such a good idea. They should do another one of those. Because um, what it, it was done because of COVID and people being at home. Uh, I feel like they need to have one ready for like a peak of winter when people are getting snowed in. That is a great but, idea. Yeah, we can pass that idea up. That it's a great the idea. We do, love the, we do love the coloring books. Yeah. What tools or resources do you wish you had when you first started doing these redesigns seven years ago? Mm. I mean, I feel like I'm lucky and I was pretty well equipped hardware tools wise um, a lot of what we've improved is operational pipeline is how we do things for example uh, at first and this is how things were done before they brought me in is you would do the line art for a mech first and then a sculptor would look at that line art to make the sculpt and I near the end of the game of armored combat production flipped it around to let's just sketch the mech and get it get us happy with just a sketch because that's easy to modify um it can be messy and then let's do a 3d model but because then we can take a 3d model and hit render and it'll make clean lines for us as a basis uh we don't just hit render and then oop there's tro line art uh, we go in and hand ink from there to spice it up and get all the extra shading and minute details that you can't put on a miniature. Um, that kind of stuff, making things more efficient, more consistent. Um, but no, I, I always have, I've been a PC gamer for a long time, so having a good, beefy computer, uh, if you're drawing and painting, having uh, a stylus tablet type setup so I've always been using Wacoms but there's really good cheaper competitors too um, about a year and a half ago I upgraded myself to the biggest Wacom Cintiq screen you can get it's a bit outrageous I don't recommend buying it at all um, but yeah just having a good setup and it's more about what you learn you know learning 3d modeling is no joke um, I learned it in school. Other people learn it off of YouTube and their friends. Um, if you want to sculpt robots for a living, pick up Blender you yep. know, and watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> All right. We had some horrifying, horrifying here, things here for a moment. We were talking <laughs> about Destiny Scale Protomex, no. which is entertaining. Uh, Destiny Scale Wraiths. Which I think would be very cool. I would, I would definitely buy a Destiny Scale Wraith. And then we heard Destiny Scale Warships. Oh, the yeah. St <laughs> Accurately scaled, by the Accurately way. Accurately scaled Destiny Scaled Warship is a terrifying concept. That That's the type of stuff where you'd see, like, the Lego battleship yep. kits at conventions. Like, a huge warship to play off. Absolutely not. Of course uh, not. <laughs> I do like those who are raising the point of trials of commission. That is very <laughs> trial cool. Of commission. Uh, trial of commission is awesome. Uh, 
Are there any mechs that you can, that even you can't fix, like the Yeoman? No, I can fix the Yeoman. That okay. one, that one's easy, I think. Gotcha. Um, that is a wonderful thing. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. There's there's a lot of mechs that I don't think deserve to be fixed um, because of how many we have in the setting, and Catalyst is moving forward with Ill Clan. Where it, you got to sell product, you got to make mechs, yep. you got to keep it fresh. As we keep adding more, I think it's worth leaving some behind. Um, yeah. And, you know, if you really love that mech, you've still got your Ironwind sculpt of it. Very true. Um, or people are going to start making their own if we confirm we've just forgotten something exists. Uh, but I, I'd i like to see us move the plastic side of the franchise forward to keep up and support the real primary eras, including Ill Clan, rather than get trapped doing strictly every single mech available in 3025. And Very true. Such. Gotcha. Uh, what mech has not been done yet would you most like to redo? Mm. Same question with vehicles. Yeah, I I really like the Fafnir, uh, the Madcap Mark II. The Fafnir. I, uh, endless love for basically every mech warrior for Vengeance through Mercenaries mech. Uh, I love all of them. Um, all the all the Omnis, all the ones that they added, like you know the Thanatos and Argus are really cool. But you know the Fafnir is the king. I want to see that. Dual heavy goss looking good on the table, because uh, I know in my local games that shows up all the time, and uh, so it deserves a new sculpt for sure. Um, and yeah, vehicles. I mean, we've had a lot of good vehicles, especially with the rec guides ones that go beyond what we had in the Kickstarter. We've done a lot of cool ones. Now we've got the Shrek. I want to see the Alicorn. It's it's bro- goss brother added. Um, I want to see alicorns on the tables to put the the fear of God into the mech warriors. Yes, indeed. <laughs> We're getting a lot of responses for the Fafnir right now. That is, we are supportive right there. Uh, <laughs> what can we feed Anthony in order to have him sculpt all the mechs? Does he need sleep? <laughs> we do. I hear there's illicit drugs people can take, but... Uh, well, that tells you where we are at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, folks. We are going to do fun stuff. I have not been offered narcotics by Catalyst Game Labs to make more mechs, no. Thank you. I appreciate that for your support right there. The Alicorn is a scary beast. I absolutely yep. agree with that one right there. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, get in your last couple of questions right here. We are getting close to 10 minutes till the end of the hour for when we're going to wrap up and prepare for next uh-huh. week right there. Once again, I am here with Anthony Scroggins, the man behind the mechs, mm-hmm. who once again can answer all of your fun questions and who is he and his team have been making these gorgeous, gorgeous redesigns that have meant so much to the universe right here. And thank you to everyone that has been piling on the praise to the team and myself through all this. It has been an enormous amount of work, and it's always really nice when you send off that last file and you can just sit back and wait. And then, of course, months down the line when the the product comes in. Of course, now we're getting to see plastic prototypes so far ahead. Um, Or, you know, these technically Mm production-ready plastics. Um, It's just really cool seeing it come together and that everybody's so happy about it. And make sure to hunt down all the freelancers that work for me. Um... And give them the compliments, too. You know, Alan Blackwell is our monster of a 3D modeler. Bishop Steiner and Harry Kaleo have done an enormous amount of designs alongside me for this Kickstarter. And I have just endless other 3D modelers that have been helping out as well. And you'll see them posting renders of their work on Facebook. It's all, you know, lifting the NDAs so that they can show off what they've done. So make sure to drop them likes. And, you know, a lot of these guys are available for commission. I may not be. But my freelancers are. So, you know, if you like what they do, throw some money at them. We are always supportive of throwing money at people. (laughs) Please take my money. That is a great, great thing. Oh, hold on. We got something there. If you could remove one mech from the game permanently, what would it be? Oh, that's always like, you know, you want to be real rough. Now, Brent says he loves the, uh, the fireball. Let's just get rid of that one. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to leave that to those who are smarter than I right there. I love everything that's in our canon. That's the beautiful thing. The, the globe with legs, I don't like it. So, yeah. Uh, who said the urban mech? No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. The urban mech, no. Uh, it's memes are important, and <laughs> the sales prove it. Um, the amount of urban mechs we've manufactured and sold, and the fact that we have three different urban mech plastic products at this point is just mind-blowing. 
<laughs> Never speak to me or my Irby son ever again. <laughs> I do expect to see somebody put Savannah Master slippers on an Urban Mech. I definitely think that they should. I think it's because absolutely going to be magnificent. The Savannah Master is a very cute little hovercraft. <laughs> so would you say the Savannah Master is the Irby of vehicles? Maybe. I mean, the Savannah Master is a power gamer terror yeah. that we never want to see on our game tables yeah. uh, sp specifically in the like 50 quantity um <laughs> i was thinking more the hetzer right now but oh, now, now you're gonna hetzer. have me thinking about that tonight oh the hetzer. lot of that oh once again the huron warrior huron warrior i think that's a cool looking that's the one with that's the, the one crest. that's the turkey i think we should do that at some point yeah um the there's an alex iglesias illustration of it that just looks cool I bet. I've not seen that one, but no, that is quite exciting. <laughs> so Savannah Master Slippers, yes, please. That's actually a fantastic idea that we're going to have to get uh, passed along. That is it great. It raises the move points of the Urban Mech. It becomes yeah. fast. Sounds good. All right, we're coming into 10.52 right now, so we are wrapping up. Just a few important things before we close up for today. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be back 10 a.m. tomorrow with, I actually don't have the schedule in front of me, so it's gonna, probably going to be another interview, which will be lovely. Uh, we are also currently at 4 Four million sixty thousand dollars right here. We did break four million today with fifteen thousand two hundred and seventeen backers. This has been a huge, huge Kickstarter for us already, and we're only less than two days in, and the money is still coming in. This is tremendous. A <laughs> destiny scale Savannah Masters. Still making me laugh, guys. That is a wonderful <laughs> and if I thing. I may give myself a shout out. I do have a Patreon page. Um, you know, it might dry up a little bit soon, though you will see the next thing I'll be working on is those faction packs if you want to see those, but the people that have been subscribed to me for the last two years have been getting to see everything going into this Kickstarter well in advance, seeing renders, sketches, front and back views, um, extra descriptions, you know, some of the questions you guys ask, you would have answered in there. And there's still more work to get done on this Kickstarter when I get home, so yeah, Google Shimmering Sword, uh, you'll find my Patreon. And it's just $2 a month for everything. I'm not trying to uh, make you go broke. So I wanted to keep it nice and low cost there. Uh, Catalyst gives me the privilege of posting otherwise private assets uh, there. But you will not be getting any STLs. You will not be downloading mechs from my Patreon. Do not be fooled. It's just images that is very fair and once again please remember this is how some of our artists get to where they need to be today once again we th we're that sort yes. of support is what keeps us living if and eating you have artist friends that have patreon pages subscribe to them whatever you can afford patreon sets artists free from having to work for companies um it's amazing it's taken so much stress out of my life the money that comes through my patreon and supplements paying all the bills and everything and that is a very important thing, folks. We really appreciate that. And Anthony, we appreciate everything you do for yeah, the company. Thank you. Thank you. This is, you have now taken an hour and 15 minutes out of your time to really take care of all this. And we really appreciate it. We love seeing behind the curtain. And I hope you're having as much fun as we are yes. with every moment. This right has been here. a really fun convention and just watching the numbers come in.